so when 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 did the project uh, of the new uh, drive train start oh it, that's a really good question i mean <clears throat> you always have to split up when where is uh where when did the idea come up and when is an advanced development concept coming up and at some point those ideas and the advanced development concept they get together and then an official idea or project is born and then you bring this into development and then at some point into production and then to the market so i would say the idea uh, and the concept of uh, a new transmission like this they go far back maybe seven eight years or so with the, with the first ideas and concepts and then i would say it was 2018 when ideas and ad concepts got together and we talked about how can a new uh, transmission look like so we basically kicked off the project internally in 2018 but as you know there was a challenge um, in order to get uh, a system like this on the bike we had to make sure that all the bikes are ready so we made this kind of smart move to bring the universal derailleur hanger first to the market so before the project actually started we developed this universal derailleur hanger brought this to the market and then uh, we could uh, continue the work on the development side so it's been for three four years of development uh, it's definitely more than that. Like I said, uh, in, in 2018, we started working on that, but it's um, the, the official kickoff in, in 2019. So yeah, by the time of uh, embargo, we are, we are working about four years on this new transmission. Okay. And what are the highlights for the final customer? Of, of these uh, new totally, this group is 100% rider focused. Um, so instead of the classic values of more gears, more range, lighter weight, different price points, we really looked into how can we make this as a, the, the most benefit for the rider. And we basically defined three big areas where we have been working on. Uh, one is robustness, one is uh, the shifting under load. And what is the ease of use? When we talk about the robustness, we definitely see here it's the derailleur hanger concept, the full mount, and it attaches the frame from two sides. We see small features like the bash guards and some hidden features and Easter eggs that are built into the system um, that are all contributing to this overall more robustness. The shifting under load, very important. Uh, we say the harder you pedal, the better it shifts. It's a benefit for the strongest rider, but it's also a benefit for all the e-bikes that we have out there. So it's an all new shift design, x sync across the whole cassette. So we exactly know in what position the chain is on the cassette and we can perfectly uh, guide the chain in the perfect shift lanes to execute a shift. So it's instead of a Kind of a random shift that we have on today's cassettes we have a fully controlled shift on this system and then last but not least uh, the ease of use i mean access in general is super easy to handle you don't need cables that you don't need to maintain but the biggest uh, aspect here is that we don't have any um, setup or adjustment screws anymore no limit screws no inner no outer limit screws and also no b screw um, that makes it way easier. There's virtually no adjustment needed. So by the time when you mount this new transmission on the bike, the adjustment is automatically done. This is possible due to this, due to this uh, coaxial design and some other very neat features that were built in into the system. What was the most um, demanding or difficult uh, part of the project? Uh, of course, um, as we were so excited about this, we wanted to bring like um, this new technology to as many people as possible at one time. So introducing as many price points at one point and also getting this new technology to as many use cases as possible. Cross country riding, trail enduro riding and also um, the big group of EMTB riders. They all need some um, components that are modified for this use case. Think about the power meters uh, on the cross-country side. Think about special cranks and chain rings for e-bikes. 
and then for the enduro riders even more robust um, product like those guards so this is <clears throat> really the biggest product introduction of all times in, in SRAM history bringing uh, a product group uh, of this size to the market and that was a huge um, exercise to get all this together we have more than 200 people working on this project which is the other challenge we have um, obviously a huge group working here in Schweinfurt in our German development center but then we have people in California and San Luis Obispo where we mainly working on all the cranks and chain rings we have people in Spearfish that do all the power meters we have people in Chicago working on the electronic side and then we have many many people also in Taiwan in our uh, factory that work uh, on the process and getting everything together and into production and getting all these people around the globe together um, is uh, another challenge for us but it's a good uh, it's a good challenge um, we like that getting getting the people together as we are a global company and what would you say is the most what are you most proud of? <laughs> um, actually, I'm really proud that we made this step going away from conservative values of, like I mentioned, weight and gears and range. That's that what we have today in terms of the range is fine. We improve a uh, little things. For example, the gear range that is now, oh, sorry, the gear steps that are now, uh, especially in the upper part of the cassette, changing from a 38 to a uh, sorry, from a 36 to a 38, from a 42 to a 44, for more consistent gear steps. Um, but generally, that we managed uh, all of these things and also brought new values to the market, robustness and reliability. Of course, everyone was expecting that, but we have never seen it on a component, and this really delivers uh, ultimate robustness. If you put that bike uh, on the floor there is like six people of my size that can jump on the bike and we don't see any plastic deformation uh, of course uh, the finish execution also is a new level um, i know gold and rainbow on all these things were super exciting but bringing this new um, uh, id concept industrial design concept and the product appearance together uh, is an all new level i'm super excited about this and then, yeah, all the challenges that we actually manage bringing the global team together and getting so many groups at once uh, to the market with so uh, exciting features, uh, it's, it's pretty cool and we are all pretty, pretty stoked about it. Um, of course, a highlight for all of us here working on the project, for all the engineers and everyone who put a lot of hard work within the last few years into the project, was of course that we were able to win the world championship on uh, Nino Schurter with together with Nino Schurter on his uh, um, Scott Spark uh, this year, 2022 in, in Ligier, which uh, confirmed that we basically did a lot of things right and we are super happy that this worked out. And finally, a, a question that most customers will, will, I am sure will ask is why not uh, one one more cog why not 13 speed uh yeah we looked into this and there were actually some of our, our e-customers asking for that hey if you can deliver us something that has more gears it would be an easy sale for us and uh, we could we would buy it right away we looked into this but uh, it's really hard to squeeze another gear in of course if you want to you only have a certain amount of space and if you want to squeeze another gear in, you have to compromise something else. So either you make the chain thinner or you take the, the room that we have somewhere um, uh, from, from somewhere else. Uh, we did it the other way. We uh, basically every room that we gained with this new uh, concept, we put into more robustness and reliability. And also you have to look at the gear stumps. You want consistent gear stumps across the cassettes. And at some point it doesn't make any sense to just add another gear um, when you then get an inconsistent gear stump, like percentage wise that is out of the range. Um, also, um, when we look at the shift design, like I mentioned, we have uh, full X sync all over the cassette. There's only one cock that has an odd number of teeth in the system. Um, 
if you would add another gear somewhere in the current range in between 10 and uh, 52, you would add another odd number that would compromise us in our shift design and we probably wouldn't get that shift performance that we were, were gaining here with this new concept. So there's a couple of reasons we uh, haven't done that way. I would say it's kind of easy to add just another gear on either side of the range of the cassette, but is it actually adding that value to the rider? That's what we questioned ourselves, but is it adding a value to the rider to increase the robustness and the reliability? Yes, for sure. Is it uh, a value for the rider to uh, increase the ease of use? Yes, for sure. Is it an uh, improvement or a value for the rider to improve the shifting under load? Yes, it is. So we had so many arguments that led us into uh, the direction that uh, we quickly went away from just adding another gear but really looked into what is important for the rider and how can we make this a better experience on the trail. Perfect.